Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Easter Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this day of resurrection, this Easter Sunday. We come before the Lord knowing that we don't always live this resurrected life in being good news to others. Let's begin by asking the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and Amen. on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter opened his mouth and said, You know the word which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses to all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him manifest. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people, and to testify that he is the one ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. 
Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This This is is the the day day the Lord Lord has made. made. Let Let us us rejoice rejoice in it and be glad. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. I shall not die. I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. This This is is the day day the Lord Lord has made. Let us us rejoice in it and and be glad. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This This is is the day the the Lord Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. To the Paschal victim, let Christians offer a sacrifice of praise. The lamb redeemed to the sheep. Christ, sinless, reconciled sinners to the Father. Death and life were locked together in a unique struggle. Life's captain died. Now he reigns, never more to die. Tell us, Mary, what did you see on the way? I saw the tomb of the now living Christ. I saw the glory of Christ now risen. I saw angels who gave witness, the cloths too which had once covered head and limbs. Christ my hope has arisen. He will go before his own into Galilee. We know that Christ has indeed risen from the dead. Do you, conqueror and king, have mercy on us. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciple and They went towards the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying and the napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the other linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting if you begin to comb through these texts of the resurrection. 
Because have you ever noticed in the gospel, we are never told that Jesus rose from the dead. We are told about an empty tomb. We are told about the woman who gets there first and sees this and goes to tell the other disciples. We are told that the beloved disciple arrives with Peter and he sees and he believes. But there is no actual account of the resurrection itself. Is this because the resurrection is a mystery? It's something that happens between God and between Jesus. It's outside of human experience. But what we are told is the result of this resurrection. And it seems to me if we look at the results of this resurrection, in them we discover a number of invitations for us. The first one is to notice quite clearly that in every account of the resurrection, it is the women that are there first. Think about this. The whole way through the gospel, we've heard about these men that hang around with Jesus. But as soon as the rubber hits the road and he's arrested, the men all scatter. And it is the women who are faithful. The men fail and the women are faithful. And it seems to me there is in that a metaphor of a reversal of things. The order of things has changed. That Jesus had this group of male disciples, so we are told through tradition, and yet now at this most important juncture in his life, it is the women that are the first to preach the good news. The order of things has been changed. I wonder about this. It seems like Jesus recreates the order of things. And now for millennia after the resurrection, we've tried to live in a way that was before the resurrection by keeping women out of so many different parts of our ecclesial life. I wonder what the invitation is for us. Does our celebration of Easter, of remembering the resurrection of Jesus, create a new order in our lives? And what is that new order? How will you allow yourself to be recreated after celebrating the resurrection of Jesus? The church is engaged at the moment in this process leading to the synod in 2023, and one of the key issues that is being discussed is the role of women in ministry. I wonder, do we have the courage to recreate things in such a way that men and women equally, equally are able to mirror to the world and in ministry what we see in the gospel today? that they become the first preachers of the good news. The second little image in that text about the stone being rolled away is also an intriguing one. They are worried, we are told in other accounts of the resurrection, about the stone. Who will roll the stone away, Mary asks, before she gets to the tomb? It's an obstacle. It's something that stops her, perhaps, from doing what she believes she needs to do to go and to anoint the body. And yet, God moves that stone away, and these women enter the tomb, and they find new life. And maybe it's a good question for us to ask ourselves, what is the obstacle that God needs to remove in our own lives so that we can see deep down in us the new life that is always budding. The world in which we live needs new life in so many different ways. A new life that springs afresh. And that new life is not going to be found anywhere else except within the heart 
of each and every person. Because what the world needs is hidden within our own hearts. It's the best part of our humanity. If we are to overcome things like war and conflict, abuse, corruption, then it means we're going to have to dig deep down into our own hearts, to the best place within ourselves where that new life bubbles. And yet, there are so many obstacles to doing that. The obstacle of arrogance, the obstacle at times of thinking that we know better, the obstacle of power, the obstacle of so often thinking that I deserve something and therefore can run dry shod over others. What's the obstacle in you that stops you from realizing this fresh new life which is always springing forth in your own heart? And the third and final invitation is the curious thing that these people all run. The woman runs to the disciples. The disciples run to the tomb. We hear that Peter is not such a good athlete because the beloved disciple gets there first. There's lots of running. There's an urgency, it seems, in this account of the resurrection. There's an urgency to carry the message. The new order that we celebrate when we talk about the resurrection of Jesus is only brought about by our willingness to participate, to run to others, to be a witness to others. I wonder how we can tell others, maybe not so much with our words, but how we share with others the faith that we have in the resurrection. How is it that we bring to others the hope of the new life that we celebrate. And this can take on many different forms. Something we choose to do for someone else, which may even at times cost us. Something we choose to say to someone. It is in those small things that the glimmer of new life begins to reshape things and reshape our life together. What will the result of this Easter Sunday be for you? What will the impact of Easter be for you in 2022? What will the impact be on your life and on, and on the lives of those who you meet? Will others really experience in and through you the risen Christ? Are you willing to live this new created order? Are you willing to remove those obstacles that allows new life to come forth? Are you willing to run to others by the witness of your life and share with them the good news we celebrate today? So I'm going to invite you today on this Easter Sunday to, in place of the creed, to renew your own baptismal promises. And so, dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. Let us now renew the promises of our own baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve the Lord God. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan I do. and all his works I do. and all his empty promises? I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have heard God's Word, and so on this Easter day, let's now bring our own needs, our prayers, before the Lord. For all of us gathered together on this Easter day, that we may experience the joy of the res resurrection in our lives, and that we would, in concrete ways, share that joy with others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the whole church, that we may run to all our brothers and sisters, telling them in word and deed that the Lord has risen. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the newly baptized, that they will walk in the newness of life and live in the glorious freedom of the children of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick and the lonely, that the risen Lord may inflame their hearts and raise their spirits. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those in leadership, that Christ's victory over evil may encourage them to work for justice and peace in real and concrete ways. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those whose lives have been ripped away and apart by the evil of war, that they, on this Easter day, may see a glimmer of hope in the risen Christ in the midst of their misery, pain, and loss. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In the silence of our own hearts, we bring our prayers before the risen Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our prayers known to you through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. I must share this water and wine and shame the news Christ to humble himself to share in our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. 
for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with all the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death and Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together now in the words that the risen Lord himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And take a time now, a moment, to offer those around you a sign of God's peace, or simply, if you're alone, to pray for peace at this time. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the risen Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, 
so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just before the final blessing, I'd like to take this opportunity to, from the Jesuit Institute to wish you all, your family, your friends, a very happy and holy Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close. May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.